Hello everyone, Jack and Ink here. So, for the last couple of days, weeks, we've done an extensive amount of repairs to this car since uh, Good Life Round 5. As some of you might have known, uh, the car got quite a bit damaged, maybe because of a couple of off-course excursions, and I lost quite a couple of parts from the car, but it's fully repaired and it's fully upgraded, and it's the fastest it will ever be. So let me show you a couple of things that we have done to the car. First, and foremost there is a new bm spec splitter with the addition of the hammerhead at the very start we've always wanted to get the car into a happier place aerodynamically it didn't really quite have the front downforce so that's why in some of the videos you see i had the rear wing quite flat almost at a negative angle because the car didn't have enough front downforce to balance out. If I, if, I, if I just angled up the rear anymore, first off, it would generate excess drag. Second, it genuinely hurt the car's handling balance and high speeds, you know? So it, it just plowed, it couldn't turn. So we finally got a brand new splitter setup. It's more extreme than what they usually have, but this is a perfectly, I guess, an acceptable time attack setup. Let me explain. The GTA rule says the splitter must be within five inches of the body line. Okay, from here to here is exactly 4.875 that's within it <laughs> on the side also the five inch rule from this point out to this point is about four and a quarter which is why this is a perfectly acceptable splitter setup now let me explain why this is the way it is uh basically this acts as a bit of a splitter diffuser if you want air can get scooped up from underneath there uh oh i dropped something air gets scooped up from underneath there and because obviously there's going to be a pressure differential, we needed to support this. So there's a wire that goes into the headlight bracket. If you, I don't know if you can see it in there. Might be a bit dark. Goes into there to really genuinely not let this part flexes at all. Front, we still have a classic splitter damper from Robert Thorne. That is still holding this on nicely. This is a fully chassis mounted setup. There's a more bumper mounted antics. Never again. Same deal on this side. Adjustable tension rods, not tension rods, tension strings, I suppose. It's the same deal. It's very nice, very stable. Uh, we've taken it up to a prob till 110, no problem. Full five inch. There is a bit of a thing there. You may notice. I might have hit a cone with it. But come on, it's strong enough. Look at it, look at it. Okay, anyway, moving on before Brian gets mad at me. The brake setup is still the same from Softec, but we've been really getting it a lot nicer a lot more dialed in basically getting the feel for how to modulate off of the brakes is the, has been my biggest topic because before maybe the oem brakes the oem brakes have been, were very good with how you can apply them really quickly but with the hog pads they grab pretty well but they're not very good at modulation coming off so it becomes with especially with the hog pads they become a bit more of an on off wrist switch with this though i can really onto it and slowly come off and just really roll this roll the car into the corner with stability uh yeah that's one of the big things i've been slowly working on i just getting the brake release correct because i've always been struggling a little bit with the brake release since my formula car formula car days gotta spin out the, those things big just from how roughly i get off the brakes so great upgrade so far loving it cutting down lap times and in the wet it saves my ass like if i if i mess up with brakes i think i'm not stopping i'm not stopping i just stomp on the brakes and I'll grab it real quick and stop it so thank you top tech amazing kit c43 kit uh loving it so far can't wait to give more time on it there has been a couple of interior changes uh the shift light has been kind of malfunctioning recently it was on the last track they started like flickering on and off so i need to sort out where the power supply come from and probably the power supply is a bit iffy some of the wire connectors i use are a bit ebay and chinese budgety let's just get this out of the way this is my seat cushion for the head for the headrest it's a corgi butt it's freaking amazing okay this thing is so comfy never mind driver's seat hasn't been different passenger seat we've had to put the uh, s2000 oem seats back in because I don't really have a harness bar for that one and I don't have harnesses for it so I have to use that one so it's a bit heavy and I don't I don't really like it but let's just go with it yeah it's rules are rules follow the rules um yeah good another very new thing in the car is uh, this shifter um let me be clear this is a race engine circuit sphere 100 I think 
Uh, so it extends from the shifter up by 100 mil. You, you remember how the old Civics, uh, old Type R's have a shifter like up here? It's the same deal. Basically, you move your hand from here to here instead of down to here. Shortens the distance of your time away that you sp that you spent away from the steering wheel. And actually, I genuinely enjoy this thing. I feel like it makes the shifting a little easier and a little nicer, which it does because pendulum and you know the level arm and shit like that. I'm going to track test this at Button Willow, and I will give you my more of my thought on it. Full disclosure, I was sent this part, but I was not paid any money. Uh, so they wanted me to do a little product review video on it. I simply asked, can I put this product review into the button below video? So, so they said yes, and I'm like, cool. They're also offering all of you guys, all of you viewers, a 10% discount code. Uh, just type, just when you check out, go type JD86, literally, and that's it. JD86, all caps, I think. Why wouldn't you guys want a discount code? If you guys want something at Race Edge, you know, like, cool, go get it. If you don't, I'm not gonna sway your decision until I pay your money. But it's good, isn't it? It's free, it's less money you have to spend, and I suppose less money I have to spend, and I get a nice little shifter. So, thank you, Race Eng. Uh Thank you for your support. And uh, I will let you guys know my unbiased opinion on the shifter. They probably won't want to back after if I say I don't like it. Um, I've been a big fan of the FT2 shifter, no lie. Uh, but I think this feels just as good, if not better. Visually, in the engine bay, everything looks, well, as usual, really. But there has been quite a couple of big differences. Starting with number one. This is more of a safety upgrade. For the last couple of track days, we've had the issue where that keeps coming off, popping up, and then spewing oil everywhere. So, uh, the genius of Brian of Bauhaus added an added uh, compression, is that an extension spring, yeah. So, this thing will no longer pop out. It'll just pop right back in. <laughs> uh, basically, with enough tension on it, it won't pop out on its own, but if we want to, we can just unhook this somewhere and then pull that and we can still check oil. It's a safety, safety upgrade so I don't get oil everywhere on the track. Uh, next, we have a new, this is, looks very much like old, but this is the new Ballad Sport uh, 70 mil uh, throttle body. Basically what this does is port, the, the old throttle body here, this opening is smaller than the opening in here. What this does is basically make these two the same size. So we can gain, in theory, a little more airflow into the throttle body. Some of you might know, my header during the last track day snapped in half. I might put a picture up here, like somewhere here. So what we have done is source a new header. Interesting thing, I was told my old header was a PLM. It turns out it wasn't a PLM at all. It was actually an OBX off the eBay. And I paid PLM prices for that stupid header. So it was tiny, the tubes were tiny and it was quite crappy and it was actually choking the car a bit <laughs> so now we have an actual plm header and with this full setup we went to get it tuned and it now makes ready for this 228 horsepower on a dyno jet it's not like oh my god you reached a 230 horsepower I don't, I don't care you know it's a solid seven horsepower gain since last time and let's be honest this is a car i beat on day after day and i drive this to school and it just gets oil change and that's about it so, the fact that it's still making even higher, even more horsepower at this date, with just, okay, nothing but intake, header, exhaust, that's it. 228 horsepower. Solid, solid amount of gain. Thank you, shout out to TF Works Mikey for getting all this tune. He's been a huge help uh, getting me figured out with a little more horsepower everywhere. And uh, we actually have 160 pound for the torque too, I think. It was, uh, mind you, this is at like seven grand, but it is 160 pound for the torque. Speaking of the exhaust, we have a new uh, gritty RS race, GPP RS race exhaust. Uh, don't, don't mind the hanger, I'm changing that one, that's temporary. It is a full three inch, 76 millimeter, all the way from the cat to here. Uh, I've also, because of changing this, I might as well also change the uh, cat. Uh, the test pipe to a 3 inch setup as well. So this is now from header back, all 3 inch. Very nice, uh, sounds good on the racetrack. Drones like a motherfucker on the highway. If you're gonna go highway driving, please don't do this to you. Please don't do this to yourself, there's not a single resonator on this thing. It's cheap though, ish, it's like 440. It's not Jay's Racing. <laughs> uh, the, the only complaint I have with it is that it's so big. My splitter, my, my new diffuser, is struggling a little bit. 
Anyway, let us get to this diffuser. It is a BM spec uh, diffuser as well. So we now have completed the whole wing, splitter, and diffuser setup. Uh, we are still experimenting with the angle of the diffuser a little bit. I think we're set a little low now. It was a little too high. You can see hence why spacers <laughs> to adjust the angle. I'm sorry, I'm so janky, but you know, what, what can you do? Um, it actually helps, I think, somewhat. Uh, we're still yeah, still dialing the car. This is this just went on a couple of days ago um, Same deal same wing and the biggest thing you'll probably see is This hard top right remember a while back. I said that is not legal while well, it still isn't legal uh, and You guys have been you know shouting at me. Don't cut it. Don't cut it. Well First off, I don't have a choice second. I have been working with group a motorsports the guys who made this whole hard top they have been hard at work trying to make a version without this part of the duck lip. So it just comes right down and it ends at the tail light, basically meets right there. In theory, that should help me get rid of this problem. We'll see. Um, it's not ready yet. The mold, the mold is still being worked on and working out some kinks. So the current plan regarding that piece of the rear hatch is, you ready for this? We're going to arrive in California, LAX airport. Wednesday night. Now, that same night, we're going to get a rental car to go to Fontana, California to pick up the rear hatch of the hardtop without the lip. And then we're gonna drive from Fontana, California to Button Willow the night, get in the hotel, checked in, and then wake up in the morning, put the new top on it, with, at which point the car should be at the track already, and then go race. So, <laughs> we are cutting this close. Um, and if they really don't have one available, we might just chop that off, you know, like this way, I guess. Good, 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 chop that off. And duct tape it up, go race. Um, frankly, let me be honest with you. Is this a nice piece? Yes, it is. Do I feel hurt by cutting it? Yes, I do. Do, do I feel hurt enough to say, okay, I'm not gonna run street and I'm gonna run limited instead? Oh, hell no, okay? Get your priorities right. I'm a racer. If I have to cut a piece of bodywork to make it a class legal car, I will. There, also, you think of the resale value. Is there any part of this car that screams resale value to you? I've gotten legit offers for this car for like five grand, and I don't, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, if I cared about resale value, I wouldn't even get into racing this thing in the first place. There you go. So that's about it with the S2000. Uh, we actually went to TF Works to corner balance this thing last time out and it now weighs a race weight with three quarters tanks of fuel which I'll explain in a second uh, it now weighs 2,815 pounds which is a lot more than what it was which was 2,720 when we raced a grid life trim a couple of reasons we actually put in the oil sump back in for safety reasons obviously aero weighs a little bit <coughs> and uh, stock seats right and an extra half a tank of fuel. Before I was I was doing it at a quarter tank. It was no problem. The thing is, with the new aero and this newfound cornering speed, we are losing. We're actually getting fuel starving, and we're below half a tank. And I can't race at half a tank. So as soon as I go out at Gingerman five and six, the, the deep demon section, I would get fuel starved if I try to full, full attack it. So now I kind of have to race at three quarters tank. That's why you have an extra, you know extra half a tank of fuel which does weigh the car down and all in all even though we gain about seven horsepower the power to weight ratio does get a little crappier so acceleration wise it's not as phenomenal as it was before which is phenomenal right uh it's a bit of a trade-off and uh at button willow we're gonna see whether this whether the corners there will generate enough g's for me to weren't have to having to run three quarters tank so we might be able to run a f lower fuel load at button willow and that's going to help us a little bit out. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see. Um, but yeah, that's mostly it. Uh, obviously, Button Willow is a very aero heavy track. So, that's why the new splitter and the new wing, and I hope the new hardtop and the diffuser can all work in tandem and help us get a pretty solid result there. Uh, obviously, my first time at Button Willow, I've been doing some laps on a set of courses to try and get myself ready. The car is as ready as it could ever be. I don't know what else I can do to it without like a huge amount like sacrifice and uh, getting rid of the balance of the car. Um, so yeah, there is I think like six, seven 
eight S two thousands in street rear wheel drive in for uh, a GTA Super Lap. So it's gonna be a hell of a challenge, and I can't wait. I genuinely cannot wait. It's gonna be phenomenal, and uh, can't wait to take you guys with me. Thank you all very much for watching. See you in Button Willow. Yeah.